Alrighty. I got this package today. This is our new projector in here. Very excited for the classroom so that I can uh, finally project. And the curtains are coming too, so that's very exciting. So that we can actually have a dark room when we want to and we make show movies and videos and things like that. So I'm very excited about the technology that um, uh, I'm incorporating into the classroom and about the idea of using this. Um, today, we're going to be talking about cell transport, you know, and how the cell gets packages like this across the cell membrane. In the previous video, we talked about the idea that the cell membrane blocks certain things while allowing others to get through the membrane. We talked about the idea of permeability. So the things which the cell membrane just allows to go through, they will just get through the membrane, like through simple diffusion. We're going to be talking about that. But there are other things that the membrane blocks so for those things you're going to need a special transport mechanism and there are basically two types of transport you have passive transport where no energy is required um, it just uses the potential energy that's already there or you have uh, active transport which is transport requiring energy and in terms of cell energy remember that is ATP so types of quantum transports across the membrane now I just wanted to start by talking about the idea of a mixture and a solution, but then we had a, we had a lecture about that earlier in the year, and that a solution is a mixture of two or more substances, where one of them is going to be dissolved into the other. Now, obviously, the solute is the particle that's dissolved inside the solvent, and the concentration is the idea of um, how much solute is in the solvent. Now, when in the idea of a gradient, all right, is that um, particles will head, tend to move from an area where they're more concentrated for the where towards they're less concentrated. So I, I like to think of it this as, as you know, if you if you see a shopping mall and you go to a to a food court um, and there's like a table here and a table there, people don't tend to sit close together. They tend to sit close, far apart from each other to spread out. Same thing in a bus when you first come in in a bus, uh, if people are sitting down, first they sit down by themselves on seats and then they spread around and then when that starts packaging that's when they start crowding around together but molecules like people tend to avoid and animal, some animals tend to avoid sitting all close together so and there's a natural tendency for molecules to move from an area of high concentration to a layer a layer area of low concentration so if you think about it why is this happening why are you going to from are you going from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration so the best way to think about this uh, is to think of a room all right, so let's say you have a room here and you have one small door in the corner of a room and then you have an entrance to another room. Now, let's say you have 10 people inside this room and no people inside the other room. What do you think is the probability of a person from this room going into the other room? What is the probability of that happening? Well, obviously zero because there's no one there, so that there's no chance this is going to happen. But what is the probability of someone from this room accidentally going to that room if you have these people blindfolded and chaotically walking around? Remember, these molecules don't know where they're going and they're all colliding with each other, so naturally they have to have a tendency to spread around, to avoid colliding with each other. And definitely the probability of going from a high gradient to a low gradient is higher. But eventually, you're going to get to a situation where you're going to have both rooms again, but in this room, we will have five, and then in that room, you have five. And what about now? What is the probability of coming this way, and what is the probability of going that way? So, well, it will be about the same, which means there will be no net movement between the two rooms, because for every one that leaves, another one is probably coming in, and that means the rooms are equalized. And that is the tendency that things get to get in nature. Remember the idea of entropy, that you're going to have um, more energy spread out and matters the same thing. It, it has this tendency to spread, spread out, spread out. So there you have it. Now, diffusion is when particles have this tendency to move from an area of more concentration to low concentration until they reach an equilibrium within the system. So there you see, you see the particles spreading from being close to spreading. So that's, you think of it as a gas that's spreading around. Uh, I'll be doing a little a demonstration of this in class on Friday. Now, this process requires no energy because it, it uses the, the old kinetic energy of the particles which are just moving around and molecules move from a high to low concentration area. Now, again, remember this is a passive process that requires no energy. There are so many oxygen molecules on the outside there that passively 
the molecules will move around until you have just as many on the inside than on the outside. So as you can see, the, this, this, uh, the membrane is going to allow the oxygen molecules to come through because oxygen molecules are small enough, and the kinetic energy of the molecules is going to facilitate that and allow the molecules to, until a gradient of, is stabilized and the amount inside and outside is the same. So this is a, a little um, view of the, of the simulation that I'm going to be doing in class. If you dr simply drop a little food coloring on water, you see the pattern of the water molecule, uh, of those food coloring molecules spreading around. As, and getting dissolved by the water, and that's, that's, this is a perfect example of diffusion. Here, another example, if you have a membrane and it's high concentrate on the left side, the tendency is going to be for it to go from the high concentration to the low concentration. Now remember, this will only happen if the membrane allows that particle to move across it. If you have something like starch, like the lab we did, starch would not be allowed to move even though it's at high concentration because the membrane is selectively permeable and it will be blocking those things. Okay, but remember that the diffusion always moves down a concentration gradient. So again, if you have too much solute on the outside, the molecules will rush to the inside. And this is an example of what happens with the cell with the carb oxygen and carbon dioxide. In the cell, if, you, if, you, if you're going to have a lot of oxygen in, uh, outside the cell, so in, other words, in other words, the cell makes sure that in, in the blood, there's always a lot of oxygen. So on the outside, you're always going to have a lot of oxygen. So as long as the blood maintains a high oxygen content, you're always going to have this tendency for the oxygen to rush on the inside of the cell where it's going to be consumed. And then that means the carbon dioxide is going to accumulate on the inside of the cell. So you're going to have a lot of carbon dioxide here and not a lot of carbon dioxide here because remember the lungs are removing this carbon dioxide out of the body. So that means that the carbon dioxide will have the opposite tendency to go out of the cell. So the gas exchange between oxygen and carbon dioxide is a perfect example of diffusion across the cell membrane. And the same process will happen at the, at the organ level inside the lung. Because you remember, in the lung, what you have is inside those little airs. So you, you have the trachea that splits into the bronchioles, and each bronchial, bronchi going to each lung, and then inside the lungs, the bronchioles. And then all the bronchioles split even more into tiny little sacs called alveoli. Now, what you have inside the alveoli, you have a sac, and then you have here on the other side, you have the blood or the capillary. So you have the alveoli on one side and the capillary on the other. And when you take a deep breath, you're actually in inhaling oxygen. So you're saturating the alveoli with oxygen. Meanwhile, the blood is coming through with a lot of carbon dioxide that was used by the cell. And then the carbon dioxide is going to go from high concentration to low concentration. And meanwhile, the oxygen goes from high concentration to low concentration, and you get what is called a gas exchange. The blood gets saturated with oxygen and and the carbon dioxide and the alveoli now gets saturated with carbon dioxide, and then you go, and that carbon dioxide is put out of the body. Uh, just a reminder that it's a red blood cell that is going to be capturing that carbon dioxide and taking it around the blood to the cells that are going to be needing that. So again, it's, uh, the lungs is an example of of the simple diffusion or a process of sending. Um, across a gradient, all right? Now, simple diffusion involves molecules which are small enough or, or are non, nonpolar and are allowed to go to the membrane. So things like fat, carbon dioxide, and oxygen are a perfect example of that. Now, for other, uh, uh, another example of diffusion is going to be facilitated diffusion. But before we talk about that, let's talk about osmosis. Now, osmosis is basically the diffusion of water across a membrane. Now, uh, when water diffuses across a membrane, the same thing will happen. You can have a lot of water molecules on one side, not so many water molecules on the other. That means the water will move from whatever there's a high water potential to whatever there's a low water potential. Now, what does that mean? exactly with the idea of a water potential. Um, I like to think of it in the same way that I tried to explain before with the concentration of the solute. Uh, people tend to get confused about this, so let's think about this. If you have a membrane and you have a lot of little, st lot, a lot of little particles on one side of the membrane and not a lot of little particles on the other, and then you have these water molecules which are trying to handle all of those, all of those solutes. So you have the water molecules trying to handle the solute. Now, the, the water molecules on the right side basically have no job to do. They're free from having to deal with the solute. So I like to think of this as there's more water freely and available on this side than on that side, which means there's a greater water 
potential on here than there. It's kind of like the water on this side needs backup. So the tendency is going to be for the water to move in a direction that it needs backup. So even as the solute, remember this, the solute is moving in one way, the water will be moving in the other. So the idea is that usually the water potential is the opposite of the concentration. Whatever you have a greater concentration of solute, you have less water potential. Wherever the solute is less concentrated, you have uh, l l bigger water potential. And basically, while the, 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 while the solute is going to be um, diffusing in one direction, the water will be diffusing in the opposite direction, and together, the, the, the diffusion of the solutes and the diffusion of water, which is called osmosis, will help to equalize the, the membrane. So this is a good example of that, all right? Now, this is an example of osmosis, which is moving in water. So here we go again. This is exactly what I was talking about before. Well, you see the water movement from one side to the other, all right, on the loop that I showed you, and that water movement, it, and both the solute and the water will move around until the concentration is about the same on both sides of the membrane. So if you have a high water potential and low water potential on the other side, because the, the right side has so many molecules of solute there, so there's a high water potential, low water potential, but a high solute concentration, and then the opposite on the other side, which means the water is going to tend to move to the right side, while the solute is going to tend to move to the left side, all right? Now, I, well, I said that a facilitated diffusion is an example of when you, so of diffusion. It's still diffusion. It's still going to happen naturally with no energy necessary. It happens from a high gradient to low gradient. But here's the thing. Some molecules are not allowed to get to the membrane. So polar molecules or large molecules which are not allowed to go to the membrane require either channels or carrier proteins to allow these particles to go to the membrane. So how that works, for example, what you would see here is an example of a specific protein called aqua porin, which will allow water to move across the membrane. Remember, water is a very polar molecule. It's very, very polar. And because of that, it will not um, like to get through all these tails here. Remember, I hydrophilic, they hate water. So how is water going to get through this? It's not going to because the tails are going to be pushing against this water and repelling it. So there ain't no way water is going to go through this unfriendly zone here, which means it's got to go through an aquaporin, which protects water from the hydrophilic, uh, hydrophobic tails, all right? And it, as you can see, it's, it's, it has a charge itself, so which will actually facilitate the process of water going through it. So is it, uh, aquaporin is an example of facilitated diffusion, which is still diffusion, but it's facilitated because otherwise it would not let it go through the And This is an example of a channel protein. Now, the only difference with a carrier protein is because it's, it's going to do what I did with the package. It picks up the package from one side and will carry it across the membrane to the other side. Uh, that's the only difference between a carrier protein and a channel protein. Um, now, the osmosis will actually, this is a cool experiment that you can do. Uh, I don't think we're going to do this one in class, but there's plenty of videos of YouTube that show this happening. But if you have a lot of water, uh, a lot of solute on the left side, and then you put a semi-permeable membrane in between, so you throw a lot of sugar on one side, and you put a semi-permeable membrane in between, what is going to happen is that the water is going to go give back up to that area that's overcharged, and before you know it, you're going to get different levels of water in the beaker. So it's a very interesting thing. Now remember, even though we didn't do this one, when we did the one last class, uh, you actually saw that the, that the little dialysis bag got engorged with water because that's what happened. There was too much stuff inside the dialysis bag, so the water had to go inside to give it back up. Um, I want to, I'm going to continue uh, talking about osmosis on the, uh, here on the, on the next video because I'm approaching 50 minutes, so I've got to stop this. So we're going to continue on the next video talking about osmosis. All right? Thank you, guys.